Welcome to House Common Blood, where strangers are family. Every episode contains graphic content, including but not limited to copious amounts of blood, unnecessary cursing, death of all ages, be they infants or immortals, fantasy drug use, nudity, mentions of sex, and sound effects of various qualities. We cannot stress enough that this is mature content with adult themes. You have been warned. I hope you're ready. Welcome to House Common Blood. I'm Gray, your DM and host, and we're a D&D 5e podcast currently playing the venture Hangmen, Worms of Frostheart. The story follows a group of misfits facing sentient calamities, threatening to destroy the world, led by a Genasi army called the Rebirth Bastion. I'm joined here today by my players, Mega. Ditto, I am Mega, and I play Eddie, the Otterboy Triad Ambassador class. I also play Eddie, as well as any other similarly named characters, much to the chagrin of Grey. Yes, I fucking hate it. <laughs> Followed by Nita. Yeah, hello there, Nita here. I play Uli Oblak, the human cleric sorcerer. As well as Mavet. Hello everybody, I'm Cusant, I play Mavet Soha Fidash, the druid monk who is the sap that holds the party together. Yes, and also a uh, father of two children, um, as well as uh, Moomin. Hello, I am Moomin, I play Seer, who's always on fire. And hated by all in Gray's game for yep. being on fire. Don't worry. Uh, you're also hated in uh, real life. I hate Genasi. Uh, <laughs> who could tell me what the hell happened last session? Everyone at once. Okay, I'm gonna try. So. Okay. Uh, I believe Eddie and Seer, um, I guess, cure, uh, Narius of his, uh, charmed affliction, and, uh, they try to explain that his daughter is not really his daughter and is a traitorous imposter. Um, and something to the effect that uh how he was being charmed i think it was uh coffee right his daily yep. cup of coffee and then um they talked about when the general um was trying to think back on when things started going badly it had something to do with the storms um they talked about uh the Seer and Eddie talked about uh, the plans of Jelly, uh, something about tunnels and great worms <laughs> and trying to uh, bury Frostheart uh, and taking their eggs and hatching them and growing them to be a part of this plan. And the tower, the ice tower, uh, was is the thing that's like cutting off communication. Um... That's all I can remember. Okay. Um, that 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 is a lot of good information. I'm still going to give you the two d ten here. Please roll that. Um, I'm just going to reframe this quickly. Um, just so uh, the party is aware, the uh, Genasi have stolen uh, these eggs from uh, these uh, gigantic worms that burrow uh, tunnels. The very same tunnels that you use to enter uh, Frostheart, and instead of uh, 
burrowing tunnels horizontally, they intend to do it vertically on the ceiling, creating relief cuts. And with a great enough impact, they're hoping to drop the ceiling onto Frostheart itself, killing a majority, if not all, the inhabitants within the city. And uh, towards the tower, yeah, there's something going on there that's causing interference in the town. And somehow, uh, good old Quagmire uh, has some sort of exception to... Uh, 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 yeah, I can't remember how much I revealed, so I'm just going to leave it at uh, uh, some sort of communication uh, within Frostheart itself. We but, we are aware that for some reason or another, the exception is that he has some means of communicating through ice. Yes. Or at least ice sculptures. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, the, oh, the disgusting display of Mavet in preparations yeah, that, of trying to... That trick. could be forgotten. <laughs> that could or, be swap, or swap right never forgotten. Drug. Yeah, a hundred percent. That could be, Burn, uh, like, like we could have a session without that, and nothing would change. Yeah. Would have been great. Yeah. I believe that the stat provided by that scene was integral <laughs> to <laughs> the plans. We success. couldn't find anything else. Nothing. Yes, the sap was integral to the plan. But yes, good old uh, fake Jalen was brought into a, a room, seduced by uh, Eddie. Uh, she mm -hmm. she wanted his flesh, his tasty, tasty otter flesh, and uh, he, she got finger banged right outside of a window, onto the floor. Yeah, you guys uh, explained the situation, to Narius, and uh, went to bed. Um, from my understanding, you guys are going to grab the ingredients and uh, do a couple other things today, which we're going to figure out as we go along here. Unless I'm misunderstanding anything. So we can put in for a long rest right now? Yep. Go right ahead. Not going to fuck you on that. Okay. Uh... Let's transition here. Excuse me. Sorry. No, you're not excused. Well, excuse me, princess. All right. So is there anything I should know that you guys are doing before your long rest? If not, I'm going to expedite things and uh, have a quick look at everyone. An expeditious retreat. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Everyone's in their bedrooms. Um, does anything uh, particular happen over your long rest that I should be aware of? Uh, honestly, no. Uh, Eddie had a pretty productive day, all things considered. Okay. Yeah. If that's the case, let me uh, reframe it here. If it's nothing integral although, that I, I should know. Yep, go ahead. Although I guess now with a particular bit of information, just just in case, uh, if his room has any, like, uh, ice sculptures, I think he's just going to find a cloth and cover that up. But otherwise... Yeah, that that's perfectly fine. Like, yes, there is a... I, I should really state, like, if you're really paying attention, there are statues throughout the halls, there's, you know, bus within rooms. If you cover it with cloth, you cover it. Just bam. Out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, um, if you want to spread this type of uh, information amongst your allies or everyone wants to do it, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to fuck you on this. Like, you guys can all, uh, all either cover or destroy the uh, bus. It, it, it's up to you. All right, let's uh, focus uh, one at a time here. Um, let's start off with uh, Eddie and work our way down here. Eddie, like, uh, how does your uh, long rest look? Is there anything in particular that you do or how uh, Eddie relaxes here? Because you're in this, like, uh, room with uh, stone masonry and uh, ice. It just has that weird quality to it and it's weirdly cool. Not too cold, but it's just a nice, cool temperature. 
Well, you know, since he's already used to the cool temperatures of ocean waters, it's, uh, you know, kind of walking around just fine, really. Uh, it's, uh, but, you know, like, he, I mean, he's, frankly, he, he's already in his pajamas. It's, uh, it's, uh, maybe put on, like, a little, um, uh, no, that's not what that's called. That's the kinky version. Um, I can't, I'm suddenly forgetting. It's like, uh, it's not a blindfold. It's just something you put over your eyes when you decide to go to sleep. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't think of the proper name either. It says kiss a daddy on top of it. Face mask, Close eye enough. mask, maybe. Yeah. 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 Close enough. We got you. It's just like you know, like just settles in the settles in the the big comfy guest bed, puts on the eye mask. It's uh, it's like uh, and while Eddie is resting, probably Eddie is ever vigilant. <laughs> All right. I like that. Even though no additional traitors were revealed in the, uh, in the probe, you know that Eddie's always just going to be paranoid. Hmm. I don't like that because he does uh, like uh, depending on how you want to flavor this at this moment, like uh, typically he's been taking the form of a uh, elf, like uh, a form specifically a uh, sea elf. Um, let's uh, let's transition here. Uh, Luya, during your long mm -hmm. rest, like how, how does Aluya uh, relax? What's her ritual before a long rest? I think just the events of the the day kind of take her out. And she also thinks about the mysterious uh, servant and thinks back on Seer and why the two, like, she just <laughs> connected with so much. And then she'll just lull herself to sleep. Cheeks are getting flush. Oh, yeah. Moomin, how does Seer enjoy her long rest? You know, it makes me kind of sad when I think about it in some way. It's mainly because I think during their long rest, it's one of those very moments where before they let the spells they had wear off and, now, and being able to enjoy the situation where they don't have to worry about touching things burning things all these things the initial beginning of the rest is kind of peaceful where they're like i get to actually lay on a bed for once or at least for five minutes it kind of like pops in basically doing all these things they couldn't really get to get away with before but once that happiness of this moment kind of disappears with the spell reverting Probably during their long rest, I think they would, well, get down and dirty, getting ready with their business, preparing for the ingredient. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Perhaps like uh, getting a uh, cloth ready, uh, getting, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, would be a good, like, I wouldn't say solvents, but you know, like, uh, Right to say medicinal herbs and uh, the proper like uh, alchemic uh, vials uh, ready to uh, use the ingredients to make something proper. Correct. All right. I like that. And finally, my bet. You, you've been a rambunctious boy lately. Um, do you do anything crazy during your long rest or do you sleep like a normal tree man? Ma vet worked up a storm and what typically happens after those types of storms you got to get some sleep so Ma vet is going although he doesn't sleep he is just going to basically rest over in the corner curled up into a ball kind of a shame for what he did with confused feelings about Eddie very confused 
Hell yeah. All right. Everyone may uh, take a long rest. Press the button. And going forward here, is there any business to be uh, done at the Lylaren uh, Manor here? Or are we going into town? You got, Imagine you guys are having breakfast and uh, Narius isn't present. I'm sorry, repeat that, sorry. I said, uh, imagine you guys are having uh, breakfast within uh, the banquet hall and uh, Narius isn't present. Like, uh, is there any uh, uh, final plans within the Lylaren Manor or are you guys going to be uh, going into town here? I'm just gathering all the players up, one location. So, like, I feel as though one of our next objectives should probably be, well, actually two things. Uh, we probably want to go find Jelenua and maybe also find a way to like diplomatically remove a current political prisoner that also happens to be your fiance <laughs> or lover. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that. I don't see why not. Okay. And you know, at some point we'll probably have to sit down with Narius about the whole raising the roof and it comes crashing down on us situation coming. All right. So uh, just to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, like uh, the agenda for today is to grab uh, the ingredients for your father, look for uh, Jelenua, and uh, release uh, the prisoner. Am I correct with that? Yep. yep. Uh, those would be the, I uh, like, I would say like the major side quests. <laughs> okay. I like it. All right. That's the case. Um, just to uh, give you guys a little bit of lead here, like you, you know that, uh, well, Jelenua is somewhere in town. You know that uh, the prisoner is being kept in the dungeon, not within this house. He is uh, being uh, kept in the main uh, uh, spire that supports uh, uh, Frostheart. Uh, within, he, he is a political prisoner. And uh, it's beyond just uh, the general's responsibility. It, it belongs to uh, the oligarchy. And uh, there has been proclamation for his death within two days from now, counting today and tomorrow. Okay. So it's uh, really up to uh, the party whether they want to visit the dungeon first or go to the alchemy shop. Uh, I would say of everyone in the party, at the very least, uh, Seer would want to be the one to go to the alchemy shop. Okay. It at least have a chance to meet her rival. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. I like that. Just like I can't help but notice that your Bunsen burner is... A few models behind the times. <laughs> Do you know that you're not uh, operating at the proper temperature? You're going to ruin the uh, the potion that way. <laughs> Just really I think Sears. I think Sierra really more like Grave. I think about it. She's going to look at this person and be like, oh, you have the old Bunsen, Bunsen burners from maybe five years ago. Hmm. Pulls out their own once and burner. <laughs> Just critiques them of all their like equipment being like out of date, even if they're not bad. 
It's like, did you know that my Bunsen burner is voice activated and can increase and decrease temperature to the second decimal place? And then she just pulls out her own hand and just does it. <laughs> Basically, like, see? Voice commanded. <laughs> voice commanded. That's good. All right. If, if that's the case and you guys are going to the alchemy shop, let me uh, move things forward here. So you guys oh, uh, leap. I'm definitely in disguise as yep. the same sea elf version, the busty version that Louis saw before. Oh, hell yeah. Do it right in front of her or surprise her with it? You know, honestly, I think I would surprise her by if she's like, is Leah a late sleeper or an early sleeper? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, like, what, does she get up early or late? Correct. Uh, I'm going to say she's an early riser because that's what she's used to. Okay, then probably you would see Sarah being like, game ready. And then the thing that makes it funny is that they don't put outfits on ahead of time. They just kind of look on the floor. They put things on the floor, take off their things, snap their finger, um, their fingers a bit with um, some components, activating them, and then they drink them. And then she becomes the elf in front of you. And then she gets dressed. Oh, Louis is just gonna uh, pull the covers over her face, but keep an eye, just a little eye hole out watching okay <laughs> then I go back to my business alright oh uh, probably a bit of uh, upkeep here yeah uh, this is a new day what is your spell storing item for the day one more time like uh, what is your spell uh uh, spell storing item for the day. Let's see. I picked invisibility. Okay, just making sure that was established. <laughs> Audience. <Okay. laughs> gotcha. She can I cast invisibility you. on herself. Oh god, I think it's 12 times. <laughs> oh yeah. Because I think it's based on your intelligence modifier. I I can cast it 12 times. It's beautiful. Yeah. Hey, that's a good way. That's a good way of using it. All right, so let's uh, adjust the clock here. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Let's go through our ritual, everybody. All right, hours, bring it back. All right. All right. First things first. Um, I need uh, constitution uh, saving throws from uh, everyone. Uh, uh, sorry, not constitution. I need everyone to roll me a d20. Uh, that's better set. There's no modifiers. Okay. This is for uh, the civilians that are taking your place back in uh, Chilariano, then the ruins. Okay. Austin, uh, because I got my sheet pulled up here. Uh, everyone one at a time. Oh, uh, sorry, Eddie. Uh, not for you. You rolled natural twenty last time. Yeah, I rolled natural twenty last time, so we get yep, to skip good. for today. <laughs> Yep, and I'm going to write down skip. Good. All right. Um, Aluya, what did you roll? I got a five. Five. That's one failure. Okay. Uh, just as a reminder, your person is at five failures. You feel the tether holding you here get weaker. My bet. Sixteen. Sixteen. As a success. You feel strong as ever. Uh, Seer. I got a 12. Oh, are we missing one? Did I forget? Yeah, because I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, everyone has seven. All right. Good, good. It's overthinking it. All right. I'm pretty good so far. All right, that's out of the way. Uh, just as a reminder to the audience, uh, for Eddie, his mother is at uh, three levels of exhaustion. For uh, Luya, uh, Lithral is at uh, five levels of exhaustion. For uh, Mavet, Penelope is strangely just at two. She's doing really fucking good. 
And uh, Seer, for uh, Eric, it is uh, four levels of exhaustion. So, so far, uh, Luya's a big overall winner for uh, her person dying the fastest. All right. Uh, saves are done. Um, all right. This is uh, your first time staying at a stationary location. Let's talk about the next thing. Uh, there's a pissed off uh, ghost dragon searching throughout the continent here. And it's very unlikely that he's going to figure out that you guys are here. He's going island to island. Uh, just as a reminder of how I'm doing this, if you feel like it's unfair, please speak up. Cause, uh, and you in particular, Eddie, because I've told you before, uh, it, you, you have a special attention to this thing now. Um, I'm going to be rolling a, a D100, and we're starting off with a 5% chance that he would be coming towards this location. And with each day within the stationary location being within Frostheart, that will increase by 5% until you leave the region. Just make sure I, I feel like I'm being clear. Am I being clear? Uh-huh. Okay, just want to oh, make yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, th this is a very significant thing. I just want to make sure there's no mis miscommunication here. <laughs> I roll a D100. Let's see what happens. Yep, 73. Yep, nothing crazy. Write down my notes. Next time, it will be 10%. All right, and again, I am sorry that we have a bit of load up here, but just a lot of things happen over a long rest. Uh, the final thing is uh, this. I, I'm not going to bother having Aluya and uh, Seer roll. You, you will fail both checks, but for... Uh, well, actually, you know, like uh, towards everyone, everyone would fail the first check. Uh, as towards the second check, that's more important. Uh, does anyone do anything about the scrying, uh, Mega? Uh, you, I know you have your vessel. Do you attempt to hide yourself? Yeah, it's it's better to limit the amount of information people are trying to get on you. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And uh, same dealio as before. Uh, Mavet, Aluyas here. Um, uh, again, I always like to give the benefit of the doubt. You guys understand, like, clockwork when this happens. Um, I don't even feel like you need a heads up for Eddie. Like, uh, do you guys do anything during the appointed time where you guys know you're going to be scryed on? Not particularly. Okay. I haven't before. I won't start now. Yes, sir. I, like I mean, check. I'm in my own outfit already. I'm in a whole different disguise. So yeah, that, I'm probably gonna I be think like, you're, you're going to be the confusing one. <laughs> well, what I'm probably going to do is play a different role and they're going to be like, the fuck happened? Okay. So what I'm going to do to make it seem a little bit different is that I'm going to be latched on to Aluya. Okay. 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 Sounds good to me. Um, yeah, that would add a, a proper amount of, uh, of, it, it would be uh, obscuring. It really would confuse the hell out of them. Just for your knowledge, uh, Mu, and uh, Luya, I haven't mentioned mm -hmm. this before, uh, your uh, secondary checks at 8 p.m., again, they're just as hard as the uh, 8 a.m. checks. Like, just ridiculously high uh, DCs that does not apply to Ma uh, Mavet and Mega. Um, in fact, uh, Mavet and Mega, we need to count for yesterday. So we're going to make uh, some quick saves here. Moment, poor Feebors. All right. Um, for uh, Mavet and uh, Mega, uh, Eddie, I need you guys to make me a uh, wisdom saving throw. This is for 8 p.m. yesterday, because, again, we had a lot of shit going on. But I know around the time that this happened. Yeah. 
And uh, keep in mind, this is one that you guys can conceivably pass. Once you guys roll, make sure you tell me what you roll. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're not giving yeah, it to Yeah, no, I, I apologize again. I need to get into the habit of that. I was just uh, reading something as I was I talking was to you guys. I was waiting patiently. Yeah. And I was being yeah. like, am I the one that got forgotten? Uh, no worries. Give me one second. Let me double check the DC on that. I'm gonna write it down after I figure it out. Okay. Okay. All right, I understand. Okay. You guys are going to get a plus five to your roll, and uh, Moo, I'm not... Well, again, uh, would you like to roll, Moo? Because, uh, well, no, I think we went over this. Flash of Genius, you need to be able to see, correct? Correct. Yeah, then I'm not going to bother offering you the roll, because, again, both the DCs aren't conceivable for you to beat. Um... Okay. Especially because I have levels of exhaustion. Yes, that as well. Right. Hoisted. Going to add you guys to the map right now. I'm going to write that down. Uh, keep in mind, you guys get a plus five to your roll. And I'll offer you guys a roll right now. Um, you will see it in chat. This down. Nice. Okay. Uh, what do you guys roll as I'm writing here? 24. Four? Yep, yeah, pass. And uh, Eddie, all you have to do is uh, press that and press plus five. Or add plus five to circumstantial. Hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Fucking 30. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Again, uh, towards. Uh, must have been a natural 20 or something because. Uh, yeah, I think that's a green. <laughs> yeah. Is that the color green? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, yeah, with uh, both you guys, uh, again, just like uh, usual, uh, the secondary uh, scrying doesn't get to you guys, but towards uh, Aluya and uh, Seer. They uh, failed those checks. Oh. All right. Now that we got done with our little bit of uh, homework and uh, housekeeping here, let's uh, move things forward here. Spend enough time on this. Uh, you guys are leaving uh, the manor. Uh, you guys are on the wall, uh, the district. Uh called wall because you guys are 140 feet up in the air you overlook uh the market the residential districts uh the farm and even to uh the farthest of uh, the township you see the docks that leads to the tunnels in the water there is ice everywhere you guys are in this like uh open openness you're in this open cavity within this uh cave within the glacier and Looking downward, you can even see it from your vantage point, uh, the alchemy shop that you guys were told about. Um, Narius would have told you this is called the Polar Petals uh, Apothecary. You know that there is an, uh, a famous alchemist that works there. Uh, she primarily like uh, helps support and... Uh, not support, supply... Uh, other apothecaries within town, but she's the only person uh, with a license to explore the surface to gather uh, uh, ingredients towards a uh, uh, alchemist in town. Uh, looking down there, you guys begin to make your way down 
uh, the staircase, the spiral staircase that leads to uh, the ice sculpture uh, garden. That'd be right here. Glacier Gardens. As you guys move over there, um, I'm actually going to require something from everyone. So, everyone on. Um, what was the name of the apothecary again? Uh, the name of uh, the actual woman. No, the uh, the the the, the shop, the apothecary shop. Puller petals. Okay. All right. I'm gonna requ uh, request a roll from everyone else here. Um, this is going to be a, a history check. That sounds appropriate. Might be something that you guys uh, picked up on. Uh, this is towards Seer, Aluya, uh, Eddie, and Mavet. Eighteen. I got an eight. And what oh. makes it sad is that... Uh, well, here's the thing. I would have had a minus... You're breaking tier. up a little bit. Uh, speak up a little bit more, please. No, but it's... Oh, I was just trying to say it's like I would have rolled at a minus two since I had a long rest, but the problem yep. is is that I disguised myself once more for the apothecary. So Yep, makes sense. Minus three, and then I'm gonna be invisible yep. for most of the time. Yep. Makes sense. Gotcha. All right. Uh Mavet. You're the only person that uh person in the party that really like picks up on this. Perhaps like uh while everyone was talking about important things with Narius along the journey. Or maybe because uh, your eyes like to wander a little bit, you do notice in the glacial garden that uh, the statue of uh, a woman trying to uh, grab an apple is gone. There is no longer a statue. There is one missing. Oh, neat. Missing statue. Hopefully it broke. Hopefully it broke. <laughs> but, uh, as you guys uh, walk through town, uh, walking through the heart here, you do notice, uh, going through the bazaar, that this isn't one event. I need to say this is a series of events that, if you guys wanted to resolve, would take a full day to do so, and probably not to create effect. But you do see, like, uh, uh, conservatives and protesters butting heads, again, about uh, the placement of the army, whether it should stay in Frostheart or go to Dauntus to help their brethren. And you see, like, people uh, getting into uh, uh, small uh, brawls, shouting matches, nothing violent, nothing towards a riot, but you feel the tension beginning to rise within the air. Um... Towards uh, the bazaar itself, you uh, see that uh, uh, merchants are dealing with uh, something a little bit odd. Um, I think you probably noticed this once, perhaps twice. But uh, you see uh, one of the merchants arguing with uh, uh, sea, uh, sea elves, nondescript sea elves of various ages, genders. Uh, bringing a, a barrel to uh, the stall and seeing them getting into a shouting match. Uh, perhaps you might even overhear like, I did not order this, what is this? And uh, uh, the person making delivery is just like, oh, this is on the paper. It, this is supposed to be a uh, rate here and I require payment. I will not pay for this, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. It seems like uh, there, there's a bit of a disruption towards uh, delivery supplies and uh, what goes where. But uh, that, that's one of the things you notice, like barrels uh, being, uh, uh, delivered to uh, places that didn't order them. 
But uh, again, like uh, assuming that you guys don't stop, you guys have laser focus, we can move on to uh, the apothecary. This is just things you notice as you're walking through town. Sorry, drink water. I wonder how long this place could survive a siege. <laughs> That's a very dark thought. <laughs> it's a good one, but it's a very dark thought. I mean, if you put a lot of traps or just let it fall, it might last for a moment. If you kill a lot of the people, there's less food that needs to be eaten. Everyone just slow head turns toward Mavet. <laughs> uh, Mavet, remember. people are very much not like that. Mavet. <laughs> that. It's true, though. I don't eat. If there were more of me, we would last forever. Fear steps away from that comment. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what's the gravity towards both those statements? Can this place survive a siege? And, uh, you know, Mobet's comment of uh, if there were just more of me. Place, uh, the world would be a better place. Uh, I want to hear from Seer and uh, Aluya. What, what's both of your reactions? To seeing what's happening around us? Uh, towards the two individuals, uh, Eddie and Mavet. Uh, um, Eddie wondering if this place could survive a siege, and uh, Mavet uh, just uh, declaring the world would be a better place if there were more people like him. Um, well, um, little distracted. I'm more so thinking, what's in the battles? Should we look in the battles? Can we see what's in the battles? You actively like investigate like uh, w one of the d what one of the confusions here like uh, one of the little back back and forths. I mean, if I just you know walked over there and said, "Hey, let me see your battle. What could the problem be? Would that be bad, guys? Because I really want to know what's in the battle. Maybe it's a body." <laughs> I About mean this. I won't fly my curiosity is peaked yes 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 also, we should see why they are being sent there well more importantly I wonder if they actually have sufficient people to help with medical and I say that it's mainly because well you can't run an army if all your army men are injured right Right, right. More of a reason. Okay, I think we're uh, we're decided here. Okay, so let me you're going first up to look one at the what I could. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to. It's the safest way I can look into a barrel. <laughs> Asking. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of spell can I use? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Aluya would like to consume a potion of clairvoyance in order to see what is inside of the barrel. <laughs> it's in the barrel. Oh look, it's a barrel of crabs. Alright, oh, uh, who's the closest to vendor the to us? Uh, imagine like a uh, bazaar. I think I described this before with uh, the... Uh the uh, tour from uh, Narius, but let me go over this one more time. Like, uh, throughout the streets, there is just uh, markets and vendors, uh, each one made of uh, wood with colorful tops, and there's just a whole bunch of uh, ice architecture that makes uh, the solid buildings mixed with uh, stone masonry. These uh, streets are crowded, uh, not quite, uh, you know, Middle Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern bizarre level where, you know, you got weird turns and curves. It seems like there's some sort of order here, but the... Uh, the sidewalks are uh, filled 
with stalls. And uh, one stall in particular, you see like uh, just, uh, again, let's say for example, uh, one sea elven man delivering a barrel. Uh, he has a, a makeshift uh, dolly. It probably has a weird design, weird uh, arc, yeah, a weird design to it. Perhaps like it's made of uh, gnarled uh, branches. But uh, barrels on the side. He's looking at uh, what looks to be a, a piece of parchment, and he's slapping on the parchment, talking to uh, the merchant, just saying, "You ordered this," and him going, "No, no, no, I didn't order this." Um. How do you approach? Uh, excuse me, uh, sirs. Excuse Could me I... one second. I gotta settle this. You, you did order this. It, this barrel was supposed to be here. You bought this. I need the cash. No, no, no. I did not buy this. And again, but, oh, hold on. Just shot How much is the barrel? Uh. The guy uh, who's uh, bringing the barrel just uh, looks at you and shakes his head. Sorry, that doesn't concern you. Uh, well, he's the client for this barrel, and it needs to go specifically to him. You can't buy this. You're client. For sale yet. Could how much is the barrel? Maybe I could help in this predicament. Clearly, there is an issue going around as uh, this is not the first vendor saying that they're getting something that they did not order. Uh, his eyes shine at it. Oh, uh, you want to buy the barrel? Well, I'm trying to figure out how much it is first before I make that decision. And he rubs his hands. 500 gold? Uh, seems like a you problem, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> is that where the conversation ends? Do you walk away after saying that? I mean, no, Moff, I could. Moffat's gonna walk up to the barrel and be like, "Why are you charging five hundred? There's obviously a scratch on the side of it." As Moffat takes his fingernail <laughs> up the side. Hey, hey! Hands off the goods! I haven't even got paid for it yet. Well, with damaged goods, how much are you gonna charge now? Well, I'm only charging 300. He's the one charging five. Eh, don't tell them the price. <laughs> hmm. Look, clearly you did not order the battle. And you need some kind of compensation for the battle. I will meet you halfway. 150. <laughs> you just see that the merchant size is narrow. He doesn't respond. He just keeps staring at you. That was just like a slap across the face. Uh, you know, if I remember reading in the papers properly, wasn't this shop under investigation? No you investigation! Know, I, I did not rip <laughs> anyone off! <laughs> Oh, so there is an issue with your soul. 50 gold. <laughs> Take it or leave it. And you see him looking around. You guys are creating a bit of a scene here. And you see potential customers are walking away. And he's just like, uh, 300 gold, you can have barrel and you leave. Yes? I hear 50 gold. 45 gold, you said? Slams, hand on table. 300 gold or else I call guards! Harassment! Harassment! Well, that gives him 300 gold. Okay. It's my barrel now. Oh yep. my gosh. <laughs> okay. Pleasure of not doing off. business with you both. Mm. Alright, um... Alright. It's, uh... it's a barrel just full of marijuana. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. win either way. Yeah, let's... Let's uh, make a roll here. Um, we're going to do a, a just a general insight check, and I'll explain. Um, let me try something different here. I think I've been fucking up, so let's see. Oh, fuck. Ignore Whoa. that. 
No! Didn't count. Not my intentions. Just delete that shit. Okay, I was doing it right the first time. Don't want that option. Okay, let's try it one more time. Make a request for the rule. Alright, same deal as before. Just an insight check. As you see, like, uh, the merchant doing a rump. <sighs> and uh, he's just signing off on the paper here. Sorry, uh... Yep. My uh, foundry just freaked out. There we go. Yeah, no problem. I can't even see my d20. Uh, in total, you rolled 12. Okay. Yep. Yep, uh, 2 plus 3 plus 7. God, that's like my third low roll. Yep. That e, it's uh, 6, 2, plus 1. Finally, Seer? Seer, for the win. Well, let's see. I'm just waiting on it. It's taking its time. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Mm. Wow. Oh, well, what I can <laughs> say is uh, Mavet does notice that uh, the merchant is giving you guys a bit of a you death. you feel better, there. I will flash yeah. a genius one. Okay. Um... How much is the modifier? Five. Remind me. Plus six. Plus six, so that'd be fifteen. Well, not to me. I'm gonna give it to Aluya. No, oh. Mavet. Mavet. I mean, I could give it to Mavet, but the problem is, if I give it to Mavet, he might not tell us right away. Okay. That is true. Fair. Okay. All right. So eighteen. I believe you said a plus six. Correct. All right. Um. Explain how your flash of genius looks towards Aluya. Basically, in this case, with like inciting, Seer just very much kind of like looks about and being like, you know, whenever I think of someone that's trying to, you know, figure out how people emote or how they feel of things, I usually try to look into their eyes, but. And this is why Seer struggles. It's like, I'm not very good at that. Because she doesn't like staring eye contacting with people. So it's one of those moments like, I didn't think about doing that. So yeah, you're uh, whispering a little bit of advice in Louis here. So uh, my bet, what you notice is uh, the merchant is giving you guys a death glare. Uh, he didn't make profit out of this, but he's getting you guys out of his hair, so he's happy. Now, let's talk about the real shit, not the stuff I'm trying to obscure here. Uh, the DC was 17. And, uh, Aluya, you got it with an 18. Okay. As you notice uh, the same thing Mavet noticed, uh, uh, Death Glare, you understand why you're getting it. What you don't understand is the person who's supplying the barrels, perhaps for a moment, also gives all of you a Death Glare. You see him grit his teeth, you see his nose wrinkle for a moment, then it becomes complacent. Well, it's, a, it's a pleasure doing business with you, sir. I must be off now. Got more deliveries what? to make. Hang yeah, on, Mr. Care. Delivery Person. What is mm. your name? Maybe we could do business again sometime? What is your company organization? Yes, none. Too important, miss. I'm just nobody. Sorry, what? I gotta be off. Me, you seem cool. Well, hang on. Hold on. Slow your roll, buddy. Come on now. Just, you know, what? what is your name? I am Janet, and you are... Look, I just work for the Polar Petals. That's it. I don't want yeah, any trouble here. The polar Petals, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm going to call you Jimmy. I will remember you, Jimmy. <laughs> well, my name is, isn't Jim. Oh, oh, okay. Take care, Jimmy. I'll see you around. It, the it's, polar it's Noah. It, oh, 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 okay. 
<laughs> just doesn't know how to really respond to this interrogation. Um, but uh, again, if you're not doing anything about that, he just gives you a second glance and walks away. Okay, guys, so that guy was like super sus. So remember Jimmy for the next time. I remember Jimmy. All right. Well, you guys got the barrel. Mavet, whatever you do, do not open it around a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't want to open it? Two gold and I won't. Okay. Two gold? Got it, Two buddy. Two gold. Don't Two worry about it. I'll, <laughs> I'll throw in three gold for you, pal. <laughs> okay. Did Mavet just extort their friend? Damn. Well, I mean, third. Third place friend, right? Yeah, I'm on a, I'm low on the tier. <laughs> yeah, low to, low on the totem pole. You went through it to Eddie. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so you guys aren't interacting with the barrel. You just bought it. You're looking at it around. Uh, Mavet, are you just going to carry the barrel? Yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's no dolly with it. The guy took it. Like, you're, yeah, you're that's fine. It. I could, I could bear, bear hug it. Okay, it's fairly heavy. It'll require both your hands, and you'll have half movement. It's going to take you a little bit longer to uh, move around here. And it's That's just fine. a heavy, it's a heavy sloshing barrel. Sure. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't spill out. Whatever it is. I know. I, I don't want another scene with you, dude. I don't need more holes in this fucking barrel. All right. Any other uh, interruptions along the way or any side conversations as you guys uh, reach uh, polar pedals? I'm sorry, I'm just typing. Yeah, no problem. Just uh, asking the party as a whole because, again, I don't want to, like... Wait. Oh, wait, now we're going to polar pedals or are we going to the alchemist that, That's shop? named the alchemist shop. Oh, okay, so yeah. it is the same yeah. place. All right, that's... Yes, it is. We are cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, that's uh, the main reason why I'm uh, uh, asking out loud is just in case if you guys have any anything on the side you want to do, or if there's any other path you want to take, uh, speak now or forever hold your breath, or else I'm just going to transition to being in front of the shop here. Even and if there's side hold my breath for a pretty long time. That's pretty hot. <laughs> All right. If there's no side combos, let's uh, transition here. Okay. Let's make it down. Uh, Puller Pedals is uh, in between the heart, worm tunnel docks, and uh, the castaway quarter. So in between purple, blue, and yellow in the uh, southern west corner of Frostheart. As you guys approach the shop, uh, what you guys notice is uh, the windows are uh, boarded up and uh, the door just has the close sign in the middle of, or I shouldn't say the middle of the day, an hour has passed, about 10 o'clock uh, during uh, business hours. What do you guys do? Well, I guess never hurts to try. Knocks on the door. Dunk, 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 dunk. Okay. They're... Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were standing right there. You know... You're fine. <laughs> Of all the things, I actually didn't expect you to knock on the door. <laughs> as weird as it sounds. But uh, as you knock on the door, we hear it uh, echo through. And uh, let me change up the music a little bit here. Get me in the mood. There we go.
So, as uh, Eddie knocks on the door, there's perhaps two, three minutes of silence. And then you just hear soft footsteps on the other side. And the door begins to creak open. And at this point, you can transition maps here. People can tell me uh, where you guys are standing. Well, obviously, I'm 100 feet away from the door. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. I accidentally got stuck in the door. What do I do? All right, classic Bethesda. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Where's the, where's that dance craze? Do the Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but uh, once it loads up for everyone, uh, please uh, position yourself where you feel like you would be. And uh, just uh, speak verbally when you guys can see the map, and I'll continue here. I mean, assuming I'm assuming the door that we are near is yeah. the door in question. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I, I can place you right in front of the door here. Yep. Also, Gray, it. I can't change my token. Is that normal? Just to make sure. Yeah, it, it it's normal. Just assume that you're under uh, the disguise self at the moment. Uh, I'm going to perfect, perfect. reload Foundry. I'm having yeah. problems. Yeah, go right ahead. I assume it's nothing too crazy. But uh, you guys are right in front of the door. And it opens up for all of you. As you see what looks to be a ice sculpture of an ice elf. Or I self, a sea elf. It opens the door. It has a bit of a glow to its eyes as it surveys the party here. And I believe it will sidestep and give you an open arm to enter. Um, it's a good day. Yeah. As you step in to the main lobby here, there's an unsettling chill that runs down your spine. Uh, shelves line the walls. It's filled with a variety of potions and bizarre ingredients. Their colors muted by a thickening purple haze that hangs in the air. The glass display uh, showcases uh, strange artifacts and worn uh, counter stands ready for transactions. Uh, that same counter is just covered in scorch marks and odd stains. The hearth is cold and dark. It seems to be neglected for some time. Before you take in all the details here, you see a grotesque scene. You see a sea elf woman, and she is tied to a chair behind the counter in the room. Her stomach is gruesomely opened blood is pooling around the chair and there seems to be smears across the floor potions and vials spill from her satchel she's presumably this uh alchemist of the shop and you see paw prints from some unknown creature that leads in and out of the rooms disappearing into the shadows the ice man that stands be, uh, besides the door, its features chiseled and lifelike. As you enter, it animates some more, moving with the creak of its frozen joints. Ah, visitors. Its tone is hollow. I bear gift in an order. You see that the statue begins to walk ahead of you. Yeah, feel free to position uh, yourselves within uh, the lobby 
as the ice sculpture is walking towards the counter. And uh, as you guys are walking, I'm going to show a couple of pictures here. Uh, most importantly, let's look at that uh, dead alchemist. I will move when Aluya moves. Seer's got a lot of free shit she can take. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I Eddie's mean, in there? I'm probably yeah. going to check how dead they are. Maybe I could revive them over okay. to find out. All right. Sounds perfectly fine. Um, towards uh, the sea elf uh, woman, there's uh, white tattoos all over her face. She has a, a red dress, uh, seashell necklace, and uh, again, all the po uh, potions on the floor are dumped out and emptied, again, on her person. And uh, she has her hair within a, uh, a ponytail, and it's very thick, like a mane, that go cascades down uh, the back of her neck, over her shoulders, down towards her mid-back. Mm. But yeah, uh, Mavet. Are you satisfied with that position, or do you want to give me a relative position that I can put you in? Uh, I missed out like the past three minutes, but I would just be next okay. to Eddie wherever we led. Okay. And assume, yep, right behind. All right. Um, if that's the case, uh, Sir. Um, and again, I would like for people to move like one tile at a time here. But uh, you see that the uh, ice sculpture is looking for uh, uh, something. He's going through uh, the ingredients here. He's taking a moment. What do you guys say? What do you guys do? This woman just has an open cavity where her uh, stomach once was. I would ask the ice golem guy if he would like to buy a barrel. <laughs> I think he stops for a moment, looks at you. The eyes glow a bright blue. And then he looks back towards uh, the activity he was doing, what he's rifling through. You just see him uh, what is... sifting through, sifting through. So what I like to know, Gray, and you might not yeah. like me for this if you ever worked in the store. Yeah. So you're going to have to tell me how this place is organized and where he's searching in particular like is it for example if it's like one side of the store has specific monster parts with calcium in it there might be one part where it's like all herbal ingredients that are found in exotic areas what well, part of the counter is he looking at yeah what's funny is uh he is not looking at any of the ingredients on display here but it is organized in that fashion and in fact, if you actually look at the map, you'll see that, you know, butterflies are uh, separated by their species along with uh, different bugs like uh, beetles. And then furthermore, to uh, the north, you can even see more exotic ingredients. But it looks like he is looking for uh, a package, but in a very strange way. As from the other side of the counter, you see him breaking through like uh, the wooden uh, surface of the counter. And it seems like he's going for the compartments that are behind it, but taking the fastest route, which is the most destructive. Well, hang on. <laughs> like I said, that's why I wanted it one at a time. It was one at a time. Yep, I know. So we're going to talk about one of the strange things here. As you fall within a uh, pit trap, essentially, as you step over that ice it essentially shatters and brings you 10 feet down. All right, before that, can I catch myself with my passive and fly? Okay. You... Hmm. Oh, right, I should roll for my potions. That's what I do. You know what? You gave it to you, me. You, yeah, I was gonna say, you, <laughs> haven't fin you haven't finished your movement. Yeah. That, that's a clever use of it. That's something that you just discover, though, is like uh, as you uh, walk over it, uh, it crumbles beneath your uh, feet and creates an opening. And you finish your movement going over to the side here. Seems like it was a hole that was burrowed into the ground. Now, one of the corrections I want to make here is I know there is a, a wood paneling on the floor. Imagine it as ice. 
Again, I'm not perfect. I can't find a map with an ice-like architecture. But just imagine a mix of wood, stone masonry, and ice walls and floors. And finally, uh, like as you make that discovery, look down and go, what the fuck? You see that the uh, creature pulls out a parcel and brings it to Eddie and hands it to him. It seems to be a, uh, well, I say parcel, a uh, wooden box is better said. Let's keep it classy here. An ornate wooden box. And it's large enough to be held in your hands. Uh, thanks. As uh, a bit of uh, a bit of smoke like uh, appears just underneath the box, yeah, in the form of hands, and then like uh, like takes it from him. Okay. Uh, do you look uh, within the box itself, or do you just move it away from Eddie? Uh, you know what, guys? Just in case, maybe don't stand next to me while I'm looking in this box. <laughs> Considering, as he just looks over at the giant gaping hole yeah. <laughs> just to his left. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. Stand behind me, sir. I mean kind of want to look at the body to make sure how long ago they died or jump over the counter possibly they're dead okay we can do that we go over the counter okay yeah please uh you can bring yourselves right over the encounter uh counter there's no walls no nothing just uh please don't go too far explore too much as we're doing this he um, stuttered he said encounter prepare yourselves <laughs> Did I say encounter? <laughs> um, but uh, my bet, I assume you take five uh, five foot step back uh, following uh, no. Eddie's orders. Okay, Eddie. Here to protect uh, you, Eddie. Yep, the sculpture doesn't move as well. He's just watching you expectedly. Shrugs, then at the very least, taps his heels to activate his shoes, and then he'll... Uh, open the box. <laughs> okay. Box. You open the box, and what you see is uh, two items. The first one is a translucent shard of ice. It glows uh, faintly with uh, shades of pale blue and white. It's smooth and cool, with an intricate snowflake pattern etched on the surface. It reflects light in a dazzling array of colors. The second item is a gnarled, twisted root covered in glittering frost. Deep, icy blue with white veins. It exudes a cold mist when broken. Uh, you see a firm, yet uh, slightly flexible, and uh, yeah, I'd say it has a refreshing minty uh, scent to it. You look at it, and perhaps even if uh, Seer catches a glance at it, you would recognize this as crystallized frost and frost root. Exactly what you're looking for before you even asked. And the statue stares at you. Take, <clears throat> take your remedy and leave. I'd like to speak with your master, please. The eyes turn from blue to yellow. And I think it probably starts off the conversation by saying, Why do you bother me? So, well, since you went out of your way to 
accommodate me in such a way, I figure I should personally thank you. Consider me thank. Take your remedy and leave. You have no business here. Well, arguably no business is happening here. Should... Should a few days pass, there will be absolutely no business to be had here. The city is on the brink of ruin. The elves are tearing themselves apart. Our fate, it is irrelevant to me. Their infighting is simply a means to my end. So you do seem pretty sure of yourself. Hmm. I'm taking a moment just to watch my words here. <laughs> An invasion will occur soon. There will be chaos. Citizens will die. Leave while you have the chance. So perhaps I should be honored that you care so much about my life? You are not fit for the Legion. You will not be the silence to peace. You are disruptive. So the only disruption I bring to the world is trying to bring it together. So ignorant, so foolish. There is no bringing everyone together. There will always be division. There will always be differences. There will always be conflict. There will always be war. We are all unified. There will be peace. You ever thought about what would happen if everybody really was the same? <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. It is beautiful. It might be beautiful to you, but I would say it would be a very temporary beauty. Because that's the funny thing about all the differences you see in the world. Is that it's those differences that allow things to keep moving on. If everything's the same, it only takes one bad day to ruin everything. And it all comes crashing down. I'd sit on that thought for a while. See the eyes begin to dim slightly. Should I assume that you have no intentions of leaving Frostheart? Oh, I'll be leaving Frostheart. <sighs> I think its head turns to uh, 
the dead woman is tied to a chair. Then back to Eddie, then to Mavet, Seer, then to Luya. Should you choose to stay here, understand, things will become turbulent. It will be chaos. But I assume you're not deterred by that. In the very least, I can be. And you just see the, the straight uh, mouth begin to curl upward with cracks. Helpful. I think he motions his hands toward, or his hand towards uh, the alchemist. No, that this alchemist was a fool. She supported the centaur cause. She supplied them with weapons, potions. Worst yet. She had no respect for her own kind. You may even see them scurrying around here. I think I counted six of them. She force-fed them potions. Well, I returned a favor. I fed her one of her own potions. Very disgusting thing she's made. And she he just stares at the stomach. The monster hunts the tortured. Care not about how much it eats, but no should it leave. It'll cause chaos. And I think at that moment, the eyes turn from yellow to blue. And statue begins to walk here we'll walk to uh, the north and uh, take a seat that's all it says after that it becomes unresponsive hey Eddie could you close the door close this door All right. Um, before we focus on you, uh, Eddie, uh, I want to focus on the girls really quick because I assume they're performing their own investigation. Then we'll catch up the timelines yep. here. Yep. Seer, uh, Aluya, I'm going to move you one mm -hmm. step closer. Um, what are you guys doing with the body? I mean, first off, we're going to definitely check how long they've been dead. I know this guy says like, oh, yeah. And this is kind of why it's like, I love how you had the grand speech. Yep. The situation for time. Eddie and them. But if she was like a dead, like within a minute, I'm totally going to ask Aaliyah to cast Revivify on this woman. Okay. I but can't if she's. Do that. No. Oh, Aaliyah, hmm. you didn't pick it, did you? I'm only level two. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're remember, that. Always remember, she's a sorceress. I forget. Yeah, I, I know. Let you me, you just play look it really at my well. Skills. You do. <laughs> Let me look. I might be able to pull some shenanigans out my from my pocket. Yeah, Wait, don't we have the potion? Which one? The one that we got from the dungeon to uh, revive. Oh. I can't. I can't recall oh. a potion like that. Um. I'm not discounting that I might have done it. I, I just don't recall such a potion. Let me... Um, does anyone have it in their sheets or written, yeah, written down anywhere? That it was one of the potions that Seer had to invest in the barrel, excuse me, of liquid oh, Seer had to investigate. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, that, I... that, that requires the actual barrel itself and, like, throwing the fucker in there. Damn. I mean, yeah. I do have tears of ball. Yeah. In fact, it says sit in it for... Oh, well, that's the problem. They have to be in it for a week. Yeah. Yeah. 
fermenting. Hmm. And it comes Bag back a little different. Uh, you know what? Uh, you can. I'm not going <laughs> to discount it. <laughs> no, but basically, I do have a way around the issue. Yep. What I need first, though, is I need to know how long they're dead. Uh, I need a I medicine have... check. I will right. assist because I do have some inkling, like some training from my studies. Okay. Oh. All right. If you're trying to be precise here, I'll offer you the check. I'll make you, I'll offer you the check. You may roll with advantage. Also, great. Why I'm asking, too, besides yep. that, I sent you questions about the potions. Okay. Let me have a look. Just take a quick look while I roll. Yeah. Because it's important because I just had a rare opportunity where it's like, can I can I do that? Hmm. Uh I, I'm gonna reserve that for like a third of building. Uh for now I'll make the edit and I'll make it Ew. a full session. That uh, if you uh, roll the same potion twice, um, you, you have to uh, do re-roll. But uh, that oh, okay. I will keep. Yeah, I will. I will keep that in mind, and that may be a later ability that you get because I do like the idea of enhancing like what's available to you. Um, All right, thank you for telling me that. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, and we'll talk about it more so you can understand. Yeah, you'll see. Gotcha, gotcha. Right ahead. Um, um, natural twenty. Wow. All right, so uh, time of death. It would have been uh, about twelve or over twelve hours ago, so fourteen hours ago. That would have been uh, eight p.m. Uh, yesterday, and this is a, a moment that I'm going to remind the players. Although I don't telegraph this a, a lot, I, I'm going to try my best to be better about the choices that you guys make in town. Uh, uh, again, uh, this was a potential person that you could have visited before they got injured. Um, and this is the outcome from uh, the paths that you guys have taken, consequence. And like uh, Mega said earlier, it's not always negative. It's just what happens, because you guys can't do everything. In this case, you guys stopped an assassination and resolved uh, the fake Jalen. Meanwhile, uh, this person was killed. Um, but yes, uh, 8 p.m. yesterday. Ugh. Unless I... 14 hours. Uh-oh. Well, um, and and because I want to be I... a little bit more specific because of your uh, profession, it looks like uh, they ingested this potion much earlier. And by 8 p.m., it, it, it has taken effect. And whatever happened uh, from this forceful uh, drinking uh, caused her stomach to be opened. And again, you see uh, paw prints uh, leading out. Multiple sets. Oh my god, she got squirrel girled. What got the alien. fuck did you just say to me? Squirrel girled? Sorry, <laughs> I, no, squirrel I need to hear the reference. Pump or... the brakes. What the fuck? Um, so there is this thing where apparently... There was a con um there was a debate where if you can kill like a big superhero like Superman or Thanos with an ability mm. to summon creatures like instantaneously in a spot and yeah, one the of the variations of a superhero name is Squirrel Girl. Yep. I so gotcha. basically yeah, you get it now. Anyway. Yeah, I follow. Um why okay, so that actually helps me out greatly mainly because well, now I know I can't revive her. Now I have a different issue. I need to figure out if we're based off of Genasi logic of things. There's no calamity right now, but I got to check that now because suddenly yep. if I find another her, then I'm going to be like, shit, we need to kill this body before um, it comes up. From, yeah, from what you understand, uh, if, uh, if a Genasi was raised, you wouldn't be looking at those corpse because uh, it goes hand in hand where the corpse raises with the Genasi and moves. Um, and you've seen this firsthand with Luya uh, being uh, within the dungeon. You took care of that. Uh, it usually happens in close sequence, although there is a obviously like a, a interval a time in between. Uh, so that that's good news. No calamity at the moment. You guys are doing pretty good. 
Uh, bad news is, um, yeah, uh, if uh, Eddie somehow dies, he's not coming back. No freebie on that one. I feel confident. Our little otter boy is fucking great at staying alive. All I can say is that she is very dead, and I don't know if we know anyone as powerful of a cleric around that could just cast Ray's dead upon her. Hmm. Might be a service in town. Never know. Um, I will keep that in mind as I will tell Aaliyah being like, I think we'll need to see if someone can bring someone back from the dead around here, but um, maybe I could finagle something. I don't know. Sure, sure, sure. Start um, searching body. Go ahead. We could, uh, you know, if you tell Mave to grab one end and then you grab another, I will hold the bag open, just shove her in. I mean, we can do that, but first things first, make sure your bag's not going to explode. Right now, I'm going to check their body for a key and... um look around the store to see if I can make something that might be able to preserve the body. And if not, okay. maybe just find anything important that could reverse effect. Uh, yeah, so let, let let me pump the brakes here. I'm going to allow for uh, one more action before the time's in line here. Then we're going to be in a time-sensitive uh, situation here. Like, what what's one immediate a action you guys do next? Are you shoving this body within the... Uh... Uh, shoving it within the bag of holding. Are you guys looking for like a, some sort of uh, preservative ointment or remedy around in the counter you guys are at? Like uh, what? Oh, yeah. Here's what I was gonna do. As we shove the body into that bag, yeah, I'm searching their pockets for keys because okay. I doubt the alchemists would have their keys just laying about. It'd be on them for okay. lock stuff. Um, I'm not gonna bother with investigation check. Uh. What you do find is uh, something peculiar. Um, what's the best way to describe this? Uh, you you find a key in the shape of a rectangular crank, if that makes sense to you. Imagine a straight line that has a ha half a square in it. You can uh, picture that in your head. But it has uh, the handle and teeth of a key. It's very strange. It doesn't look like it would fit into a regular locks, but you do find that. And the times align here. I'm going to allow for a scene with everyone together before I really lay down the situation here. But I'm not going to allow for any like crazy actions. What do you guys say? What do you guys do? What do you communicate? Um, looks around first, being like, I need just a moment to look around ingredients. I think, though, based off that vague threat, Eddie, we might need to look around this place. i rather, I rather not suddenly have loose creatures about possibly murdering more people. So, uh, I think possibly we've also confirmed a few different connections. And it's like, uh, like uh, looking back over at the golem, it's, uh, as well as maybe some bits that are a bit more ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the two things I do want to outline, at least from uh, that talk were uh, two strange uh, things he mentioned. Uh, one was keyword legion, and uh, the other one uh, sounds like a very strange goal of achieving peace for uh, twisted means. It's because, yeah, for... I guess in a sense it's probably a good thing, but I was... Definitely not talking to the last person we talked to through a statue. Hmm. Or at least you guys talk to them. Which tells me that at the very least they're allied in some way, but they're also still their own separate entities. I think they're just working together through a common goal but then one's probably keeping secrets from the other. 
Sounds about right. That makes a lot of sense. So in this case, I think whoever I was talking to is under the impression that whatever plan is in motion so is merely meant to wipe out. I'm not sure how familiar they are with the replacement part of that. I'm guessing then this alchemist was no fool. Then they definitely had their secrets hiding. Then we definitely need to search maybe where this person couldn't find things. Yeah, they definitely didn't kill this woman for no reason. And if she were just a simple protester or rebel to their cause, it's, uh, I don't think they would have done so in this way there there might be some evidence around here that gives a little more detail to what she was up to mm. then all of you who she was involved in then I just want you all to know that I have a key well, shows the key to everybody mm. look around I'm going to investigate this area since I understand most of these ingredients. Hopefully, sometimes they're different. But I recommend if you can look around, find any clues. So, like at, at that, I do need to say that as you're even uh, speaking, the air is getting thicker with this uh, purple uh, smoke begins to grow uh, thicker and thicker. It's actually getting a little bit harder to uh, see everyone. At this moment, I need to mention that uh, everyone is lightly obscured. Uh, as time will go on, it may turn to he heavy obscurement. Obviously, there are two people that it doesn't uh, truly affect within reason. Uh, mostly Mavet and uh, followed by uh, Eddie's blind sense. But uh, let's talk about the investigation here. Because, uh, like you mentioned before, uh, allegedly this alchemist had uh, six subjects that she was working on. And from what you understand from the locked door, they may be scurrying around here, running around here. And I'm, I'm not going to have an investigation check for this particular room. As you guys are looking around, coordinating, speaking, then begin to start coughing. You hear a rustling from above you. Glancing up, you see a figure clinging to the ceiling. You see their silhouette. And every so often, you see them just scurrying around the ceiling and cling tighter to a corner of an area. It's, it's just a sense of danger and madness that's palpable in the air. And looking around, you don't really see anything else that's out of the ordinary besides that figure scurrying about onto uh, the ceiling. And at this point, I need to start keeping track of time. I would like to make sure, is it everybody seeing this? Or does Ma Mavet see it too? Everyone's seen it. Okay, I just want to make sure it wasn't like an illusion or something. Uh, well, you'd see it more. I, I said uh, uh, to everyone else, and this includes Eddie because this is outside of your 10-foot range. Uh, this is just a, a silhouette towards you, Mavet. You see that this person is a sea elf, and it is a woman. We'll reveal her onto the map. And you see that she is on the ceiling. I'm going to say the ceiling is about 15 feet up in the air. I'll represent that. And I will show a picture of her. You see that she's scurrying around on the ceiling like uh, her uh, hands making full contact with it. Uh, it, it appears she has some form of, uh, uh, again, I'm not going to pull the wool over your guys' eyes. You guys have seen this spell before. You've seen Atticus uh, use it. As racial building, it looks like a form of spider climb, and she's just dancing around on the ceiling. 
basically playing lava with the floor. Um, let's uh, let's go to Eddie here. Eddie, you you uh, hear the screen? You see Mavet? Mavet, do you say anything? There's a really pretty lady on the ceiling. <laughs> oh, so we're in that kind of horror play then. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Just like looking to everybody else. So are we going to deal with the smoke first or the elephant in the room? I didn't see an elephant, just a lady. I think if you need to, Eddie, one of us goes with the other that could see better. And I'll take care of the smoke if you take care of threats. All right. Uh, I guess like looking up directly at the creature in the corner that's been pointed out. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose you're friendly, are you? And then Help! Consider Help me! <laughs> Did her mouth move when she said that? What do you need help from? The monster! The monster! I can't see it anymore! What's your name? <sighs> Fuck you. <laughs> All right. She, she gives you a name. I'm going to say Ahina. Sounds like a good name. Hina! Oh. Mavet's going to put his hand on Eddie's shoulder. I got this. Ahina, my name's Mavet. I can protect you. <laughs> Do I need to insight that? <laughs> <laughs> Mavet or the woman saying her name? <laughs> Mavet. <laughs> Please. I'm actually curious how this turns out. Just to double check, it's the morning, right? It is uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. That is correct. All right, okay, it makes sense. All right, Eddie, roll. Yeah, I got the DC on. in mind. Oh, God. Uh, you have a DC, huh? All right. Here you go, Eddie. Yep. That's All 13. right. What you get, what you gathered, the DC was six. Ma, that's a <laughs> horn dog and thinks this lady's actually pretty and wants to pretend to be what a superhero. What the fuck? Definitely makes sense. He's made of wood. <laughs> All right, he's trying to get a little bit more experimental. He liked how it turned out with Eddie. Maybe he can have this woman scratching the furniture too. <laughs> he's tracking. All right. Movement, momentum. Uh, Eddie, uh, that's uh, like way I laid down is the information you have on hand. Um. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to give out a little bit more here. Um, Just to uh, clarify, is Eddie in a good position for you? I, I just put him on uh, the map. I assume he was close by since he was interacting with the box before. At some point, uh, I stopped being heard. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I was I was waiting for any remark um, after the insight check is all we heard from you. 
Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, when he made the check. What I was saying is that like basically yeah. the main reason why Eddie asked for uh, asked for her name is mostly just a bit of a bit of a specific question. Uh, yep. It's like uh, because there are kinds of creatures that like to imitate other people. Oh, uh, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, but in which case, all right, creature we can't see hovering around in here. Yeah, this is a good time to turn this on. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, hey, Eddie. Looks Chaos like mode. Yes, yeah. mode. <laughs> Nods. He understands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, actually, like, uh, and like, uh, with that, like, uh, the uh, smoke specifically around Eddie begins to intensify. Okay. Uh, keeping an eye on the woman in the corner, the golem, and his allies as he casts spirit guardians around himself. Okay. I like that. Right. Question. Yes. What can I help Could you? Because uh, I'm not sure if it's even going to work. Can I uh, use the spell magic on the fog? Hmm. Let me look at Dispel Magic as we're going through things here. Okay. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Alright. Yeah, i would allow it for you to test it out. I have a way of uh, resolving it. Keep in mind, uh, it will have an impactful effect, but probably not up to the scale that you have in mind. And I'll explain it uh, a after the combat here, but it will have an impact. Okay, I will yep. use the spell magic. Well, hang on, we're going in initiative here. Oh, dang yep, it, no I keep doing that every fucking time. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. No. <laughs> All right. They're angry. Uh, They're being attacked by the mysterious creature. Yep. So then, yeah, uh, in case, uh, yeah, in case you need a, a reminder, which yeah. maybe you probably don't, uh, uh, a fifteen radius, a uh, fifteen foot radius around Eddie is yeah. will require a wisdom saving throw for a creature that enters it or starts its turn there for the first time. Okay. Fifteen foot. And gotcha. it will, and it will be. I guess the more appropriate damage type here is necrotic. All right. Or, gotcha. No, no, radiant. Radiant is more burny. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, just for my clarity, does this phase through like solid objects, uh, walls? Um, it's one of those things that block gets blocked by total cover. <laughs> okay. Noted. 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 Or at least I don't. At least I believe it gets blocked by total cover. Okay. Um, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to add the little statue to initiative. I'm going to say that he uh, starts his turn in there, uh, takes a damage. Oh, wait. I mean, I no, I excluded the statue. Okay, you excluded the statue? Gotcha. I excluded the statue, the yep. woman in the corner, and my allies. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Understood. Yeah, if that's the weirdly, case... Weirdly, something's... Yeah. Weirdly, I get Go the ahead. feeling that this golem was actually probably or actually an actual assistant to this store. Like uh, and I feel like the store will actually go to shit if nobody's there to run it. <laughs> <laughs> That's also why yeah, I was you know what? Like, I'm not gonna rob the place. I just got the key. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna offer you one check here, and only to you, Eddie, because he is within <laughs> ten feet of you. Because you did something I didn't expect. Because I didn't expect this statue to last this long. I'm gonna provide you an insight <laughs> check. Wow. <laughs> Day. Now, now because this is a statue, it's gonna be really fucking high. But if you actually nail this somehow, some way, like you're gonna get some juicy information here. I mean, I do have doubts here, uh, but <laughs> good. I'm curious about something. Well, I guess would this check have been made uh, before or after I cast Spirit Guardians? After it, it only procked it after. If you if you chose to exclude the statue from it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. But hey, it'll be a check for another day. Let's see uh, what happens. But again, it, you're looking at a statue and you just see the glimmer of the blue light just flash. You don't understand the significance. All right. Um, any movement during this turn? Like, uh, or are you staying in your uh, current position? Uh, let's see. Yep. Keep in mind the block uh, to your north is the pitfall. Yep. yep. Well, right. also as a reminder, uh, yep. because Eddie did activate his shoes, he's just going to hover over the floor. <laughs> oh, that's really good. All right. I will, uh, but, uh, if you're doing a hover, I assume it's five feet up. I'll put you down as five feet unless you correct me. Okay. Five foot hover. I like that. And then I think he will move over. Oh, does Foundry not have a way to give auras on a token? Oh, it does. Um, let me just do that. That's a smarter idea. Aurora's, and you said 15 feet, and uh, I like the color green. Okay, 15. Not far at all. Yep, and it'll naturally come out as a race. All right. Although, now that I've gone further into the store, like, oh, wait, what am I seeing over here in this? What What, what is that? <laughs> okay. Uh, as you uh, come further out, that is uh, the uh, figure I was telling you about earlier. Uh, she is on the ceiling, and she is scurrying about. That's no, fine. It's not working properly. It's, uh, it's fine. I'll just use the ruler. It's cool. Uh, in which case, uh, Eddie will float over this part here for the remainder of his movement. Okay. Uh, you know, like making sure that uh, as much of the area near this woman as possible is covered by whatever creature has decided to <laughs> okay. uh, make its home in here. And similarly, uh, I think for the time being, Eddie will just flow over here, and that'll be the end of Eddie's turn. <laughs> okay. Um. Son of a bitch. All right. All right. Let me make a note here. Let's reflect this. Okay. Actually, how tall is this room in total? Uh, 15 feet tall. Okay, cool. So basically that thing just covers the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> yep. Now uh, you, you picked a really good spell with it, and I'm not going to uh, ship the dimensions I had in mind. Uh, that's a pretty damn good spell. Um, things are happening. My vet, it's uh, your turn. What do you do? So the first thing I will do is put my barrel down, which I have signified with the circle. Okay. It is right there. And is there a reason why, like, the majority of this map is black for me? Because you don't know what's over there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure if there was, like, a wall or something blocking it. There is. Yep, everywhere oh, yeah, there you are see walls, black. Like, their doors yep. and all that. Yeah, it's all blocked off. You are within interior. There's a lot more to this entire place. Then I will make my way towards where Eddie is. Okay. As you get over there, no, back up one step. As you reach over there, we feel the ground begin to rumble. And bursting from the ground is this creature. And I will explain what it looks like. 
It is just covered in ice, has shark-like features for the top half of its head, and underneath it, it's almost like a humanoid shape. It is very bulky. Its hands are humongous, claw-like, uh, mole-esque, like claws. As it burrows up and explodes out of the ground, I will deal with that uh, spirit guardians once I'm done with this, uh, Eddie. I will not forget. Because it comes oh, out of the ground. Probably one yeah. extra thing. Go, go ahead. Uh... This is more of like, because I don't remember if we decided this uh, earlier on in the campaign or not. Yes, sir. Uh, are we just going to treat the area of Spirit Guardians like difficult terrain, or are we going to do it by how the spell is written? Uh, how is it uh, written? Uh, just give me the quick rundown so I can make quick adjudication here. Uh, basically, it's the clunkier version, essentially, where anybody who's in the area... Like their speed, like their speed value is cut in half. Uh, we'll, we'll do typical terrain. Well, we'll do okay. typical terrain. We're going to keep it nice and simple. If the creature uh, moves in an area covered by uh, the spirit guardian, it will suffer penalties for a difficult terrain to make it easier on my head. Okay. All right. First and foremost, we're going to talk about erupt. It is erupting out of the ground. Now, let's see what it covers here. All right. Um, yeah. uh, it moves uh, uh, up to its burrow speed directly upward. It bursts uh, uh, from underground. We see a flurry of debris and is pushing each creature in its space to the nearest unoccupied space, I believe. Yeah, because it triggered the moment my bet went directly north. Um, I do apologize. Yes, it triggers exactly when you go there, then you're pushed back. Um, then I'm going to require, uh, dexterity saves. I, yeah, even from Eddie, because he happened to be within five feet here. Um, Eddie and, uh, Mavet, I will offer you guys uh, the saving throw here. All right. Is in the chat. Please make the roll. And I believe your boots have a hover. Is that correct, Teddy? Uh, yep. Okay. So you won't land on the ground at all. Uh, Mavet, you pass. Mm. Yeah. So you just take a uh, half the damage. Well, I think I have evasion now. I want to see what my level is. Uh, level seven. So I would take, yeah, so I would take zero damage. Oh, hell yeah. It's perfect. You still get uh, knocked back regardless. It's just you are, you take no damage and... Uh... All right, Eddie, you do fail. I'm still going to roll damage here. Nothing crazy. Um, push back five feet. And it's going to be a 2d6 damage. Nothing insane. Uh, okay, it is something insane. <laughs> it's fucking damn near max damage. Uh, please deduct uh, 11 uh, bludgeoning damage from uh, your uh, character. Um, and because it readied an action, it, it can't do anything else. It can't use uh, the rest of its movement here. It will take uh, the Spirit Guardians and... Uh, Double check uh, Spirit Guardians. So I have it down once. All right. Yeah. Be a wisdom saving throw. Gotcha. All right. I'll make the wisdom saving throw. As a four. 
Please roll the damage, Eddie. Fucking hell. Oh, that's a great start. Oh, whoops. Wrong tap. Uh, D4, D6, D8. Okay. Jesus. Start right here. Alright, I'll deduct that from a character. That's from 12. And uh, you just see this uh, a creature that is uh, that has surfaced here, and it just roars. Uh, keep in mind uh, that there's just light obscurement here. Uh, Mavet, is still your turn, as that just interrupted your turn, your movement, and pushed you back. What do you do? Awesome. So I'd, I'd ask the pretty lady if this is the monster trying to hurt her. Yes! Kill it! Kill it! With that said, Ma Vet is going superhero mode. He feel he sees the damsel in distress, and he is going to activate his arms of astral self. Okay. You do so. They must succeed on a deck saving throw or take 2d6 force damage. All right. Uh, one more time on the saving throw. You said dexterity 16. All right. I think. All right. It's a very dexterous creature. Yeah, with the five, it, it fails. All right, it will take eight damage. And now I'm gonna whack it. Okay, give it a good old fashioned whack. Really whack it off. <laughs> uh, can it see and have you obscurement? Let me double check. It is not blind to you, that's all I can tell you. But I should mention uh, towards uh, Eddie. Um, yeah, you have hover. You'd have uh, prone in your prone while hovering. Yeah, I'm aware. Yep, just want to make sure. Um, I I'm going to uh, state uh, for Mavet, its uh, focus is entirely on you. Good. Mm -hmm. So does a 15 hit? Uh, is there anything you want to do to that roll? I don't think there's anything I can. Okay. It, Technically, as uh, a monkey miss. do, but... It, it misses. Then I'm going to take another attack. Yep, go right ahead. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, that's a seven damage. Uh... Well, what type of damage? Is it bludgeoning? Yes. Okay. Magical? Yes. Uh, let me double check with Monk. Yes, it is. Okay. Takes full seven damage. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Yeah, nothing else. I use my bonus action. Yep, to activate and uh, attack, uh, extra attack, and uh, most of your movement. All right. Keep in mind, it's just light obscurement at the moment until like uh, things have changed. All right. Luya, it's your turn. You've seen this just large, uh, fucked up looking creature burst out of the ground. What I'm just going to prop up one. Boop. Yep. If I can Bolt move. over. Yep. If I'm not moving. Struggling to move? Uh, do you have the ruler on? No. I've got the... 
Try it. Nada. Hold on a second. Nope. Put my token controls on. Token controls. Yeah. If you can just move me up one, yeah. please. Yeah, no problem. And then cool, cool, cool. I will just use my spear. Okay. Uh, you can see the creature. That's perfectly fine. Um, there are allies in the way here, um, but you are on a counter five feet up. Yeah, there's nothing obstructing your uh, trajectory. Oh, I can just make it apparate behind it, so. Oh, hell yeah. There you go. Please, let me see the attack. Oh my god, I've been rolling bad today. Anything you want to add to that? I got nothing to add. Gotcha. All right. If that's the case, it misses. And I believe it reappears in your hand? Yeah. All right. Make another attack. Oh, actually, nope, I, I don't can't. believe you have X. Yeah, you don't have extra attack. That's right. You're a sorcerer cleric. Oh. Yeah. All right. Anything else on your turn? Uh, No. That's it for me now. Yes, ma'am. All right, Seer, it's your turn. All right. Let me see what I, I can do. It burned from the ground. So. Just before I jump onto this thing in a sense of like combat, do yep. I know what this creature is? Yeah, I'll give you advantage. This was an alchemic creation here. So, uh, a free check. Uh, I'll allow for history, and I'll offer you the roll. Well, arcane is more uh, apropos. I wait. Yep. I'm giving you the request right now. Twenty-two. Twenty-two? Mm. Correct. Okay. And you're not adding anything to it? Um, I don't think so. If I okay. did add more to it, it it's like, I don't know. I don't think I need to. I'll do it after it maybe it dies or something like that. Mm. You see this to be, uh, you, you've heard about this type of creature before, and this seems to be a variant of it. It's uh, called a boule. Essentially, it's a, a land shark s creature, and this seems to be an ar uh, Arctic variant created by uh, a an alchemist, essentially. Um, the uh, again, looking at this form, you see that it has very weird uh, uh, transmutations, mutations. Yeah, it has very weird uh, mutations going on with it. Like it, it's standing on its hind legs and has a bit of a crouch instead of being on all fours. It almost looks human-like. And your eyes dart back to uh, the alchemist behind you. And do you think you found the mother? Um, towards uh, the creature itself, uh, the most substantial thing that I can tell you is... It uh, relies on a tremor. Uh, you know that it relies on a tremor sense. So if you're walking on the ground, uh, it can feel where you're at. Um, it may have uh, more senses to it with this variant, but I'm not going to disclose that to you. And uh, more importantly, which uh, might make you a little bit more startled, is you know that this creature, this variant, has a feature called blood sense. Essentially, if it tastes the blood uh, or smells the blood of a certain creature, it's very good at tracking it. And looking at the uh, figure that's on top of the ceiling, you see a little uh, couple droplets of blood, and you begin to worry about all the subjects in this building. Looks like they're trying to get their snacks. All right, then. Um... First things first. How do I want to do this? I could be a combat monster, but I think what i rather do is make someone else a combat monster. 
Okay. Um, so, Eddie, you're not able to cast your Eldritch Blast again if I haste you, correct? Uh, cast a spell is not one of the, uh, the options for haste. Yeah. Fair enough. Don't worry. The reason I'm asking is because if I do cast on someone, I'm going to probably cast it on our friend Mob. Well, the problem is this creature is large, probably tall enough to reach the ceiling, right? Oh, it's hard to say. It's slunched over, perhaps, if enough effort's put in. I mean, I don't need to worry about that. Point to the person on the ceiling sanctuary. Okay. Sounds good to me. That's my bonus action. Now for my action. Um, good old fashioned. Well, actually, this is going to be the funny one. So usually everybody sees um, her use like vials and things like that. This is one of the rare moments where they would just see her just point her hand at the thing and shoot a produced flame at it. Okay. So like, she just makes things erupt from her hand. Okay. Uh, please uh, make the attack. Minus three as always, and that's a horrible miss. Uh, that is correct. That is a miss. And that was my turn. Okay. You're back. All right. Now let's uh, talk about what's uh, happening with the air itself. Like uh, that purple smoke is getting uh, uh, thicker and thicker here. And at this moment, uh, I'm going to say Aluya and Seer. Mm -hmm. Looking around you, you begin to see the vials begin to uh, shake as it looks like uh, the smoke is dissolving the actual glass itself. And as you see, as the smoke is uh, piercing the bottle and going in, it's making it volatile. I need both of you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, I didn't disperse it? Uh, I didn't hear you use uh, Dispel Magic during the initiative order. You made an attack. Oh, I thought I did it before. No, he uh, made you wait during initiative. Honestly, yeah. I would maybe give Aluya a break. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm on. Yeah, it was a clever idea. No, I'm again. That's bad on my part. There's a lot of moving gears with everything in in this encounter. A lot of which you're not seeing just yet. Um, I will allow for it. It's costing a resource. Please do uh, the dispel magic. I have a DC in mind here. Okay. Because this is a special. This is. Uh, very uh, special, and I already have a set DC for it. Because I already used my spell yep. slot for it. Yep, go, yep, yep. Go right ahead. You're going to have to make a check for it. This isn't this isn't That's a run-of-mill uh, spell effect. No problem. Yep, go right ahead. Where's the check? Um, uh, is, just uh, remind me, with that, it's uh, essentially the equivalent of a, a spell attack roll. It's a or, charisma check. Okay, it's Christmas for her. Or Christmas check. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. All right, Leah, I'm gonna offer you the Christmas check. It's in the chat. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, no. You can okay. you can choose to spend a sorcery point to re-roll the check. I will you are do a high that. Enough sorcerer for that. Okay. E. All right. I'll offer you another roll. Eddie, our hero, clutched. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Get again. No. Oh okay. my yeah, god. Please, yeah, please spend <laughs> that. Uh, yeah. You don't. So let me explain what could have happened. 
Uh, these are essentially going to be the lair actions. This is outside of these monsters' control. There is something that's happening within this uh, alchemist shop that is causing the smoke. And if you would have succeeded, you would have would have taken away one of uh, the air quotes, uh, uh, or not air quotes, uh, the uh, lair actions. That's what I'm willing to give you. Yeah. Because it is, yeah, it's an expensive resource. It's something you can do repeatedly. You can either spend to spell magic for it or try to find the uh, source and deal with it. It's how you guys want to deal with an initiative order here. But I'm going to be a little bit more tighter with that. I allowed you to do it. Uh, I'm going to stick by what I said. Uh, dexterity saves from both uh, Seer and Luya. I will offer you both the roll. Okay. Dexterity save. You see the bottles begin to rattle, shake, and you see it glow uh, very bright with the starburst light. Oh my god, I can't, I haven't even I'm, rolled above a 10. I'm so sorry, girls. This is gonna be bad. I mean, right. exhaustion's a but. But it's still okay. Okay. Wait. Right. What do I have here? Oh, oh, never mind. All right. You see uh, all the bottles begin rattle, shake, then explode as you all take a... Uh, or not all. Uh, Aluya and uh, Seer take uh, 14 uh, force damage as this is just uh, the magical mi uh, mixtures are becoming volatile and explode with magic. Um, the corpse is flung to the wall as well, or at least the chair tips over. It's still intact, but it's in ruins. Uh, please deduct uh, 14 uh, HP from both your sheets as I move on here. Okay. All right, we're going to more than likely go through one, maybe two more rounds of initiative here. Um, Eddie, uh, you've seen the volatile reaction. You see the creature in front of you. You see the damsel in distress. You know that uh, you've been told there's about six. What do you do? Uh, well, first he writes himself in the air. Yep. <laughs> How's that look? I'm actually curious. <laughs> Like, I I almost want to imagine that maybe it's just because, like, it just hasn't happened yet. Just, like, basically, you know, like, in the air, just, like, you know, like, knocked over. And he's actually kind of, like, for the, maybe, like, the more most animated anyone's seen him <laughs> since meeting him. Just, like, you know, like, just kind of, like, flailing his arms. He's just not used to, because, like, he's used to, like, possibly, be like, being prone in the water. But, you know, like, uh, water is, like, a very different consistency. It's like, yeah. uh, but now he's in the air and just like, and it's, which, you know, flying in the air is kind of like swimming, but the air is very different. So it's just like, wait, no, no, too much. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, uh, and honestly, like this might be a situation where <laughs> the only reason why Eddie actually does write himself is because Eddie comes over and kind of like, you know, gently, it starts like bringing him upward, <laughs> upright again. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, but, uh. Now that Eddie has sufficiently calmed himself and gotten his bearings, uh, uh, he's going to move. So I guess he's going to scooch over to here. Yep. And oh, is that is that yes, still sir. just a? An effect yeah uh, again i'm having issues with it i'll resolve it like post session here okay yep it gets uh, yeah it's, uh, and it's like uh, eddie is going to do the eldritch blast thing <laughs> okay Yeah, and I'm assuming this is coming from Eddie and not Eddie. So yeah, it's coming from Eddie. Okay, it's coming from Eddie. Hope <laughs> everyone at home got that. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh wait, oh, come on. 
Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. I I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but when you uh, cast Eldritch Blast, there's also a number of attacks that you can make, a small tap when the, the pop-up happens. So if you want to expedite okay. things. Yeah, if you want to expedite things and make all four blasts, because there's one target. Uh, go right ahead, well, please. Three. I, I, we're not yeah, that three. high level. Yeah, yeah you, you know what I mean. <laughs> it, you, you catch the jerk. However many blasts, just a caps have four, so sometimes you might have to press it twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not sure if I... Do I actually it, see that option? Yeah. Or will it happen it, it, when it, I make the... Yeah, when, when you make the attack roll, there should be a tab for it, like uh, right underneath uh, the circumstantial uh, damage. It should be a little tap. This is one, perhaps. Uh, if not... Uh, oh, again. number of rolls. Okay. Yeah, number of rolls. Yep. There you go. All right, we, yeah, I got I mean, we that. can expedite that a bit. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, after the gargoyle fight, I thought this might be a necessity if I'm dealing with multi-attack here. Wow! <laughs> I apologize. That is upsetting. one for one <laughs> Holy shit. I am you know, so fucking sorry, dude. You know what? That's what that's what two sorcery <laughs> points and a bonus action are for. Because seriously, <laughs> holy shit! I, you know, what? I'm glad I rolled the ones on attack rolls and not like a very important saving throw. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a total for the audience. That's nine, twelve, nine. Uh, all of which, which misses. Uh, you can flavor that however you want. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think roll. that was a situation here where he still wasn't like quite gotten his bearings back and it's just like misfiring all over the place. Yeah, just explosions of glass, wood, shrapnel. <laughs> yeah. Whoops, hey. sorry, Seer. I, mean, I know yep. it's not your store, but... <laughs> <laughs> Might be. <laughs> it's okay, I understand. I'll stop being mad. Oh. Okay, 19, 19, 11. All right, that's a lot better. Still uh, moderate rolls. Okay. Yeah, please uh, roll the damage. You should be able to do the same thing. Uh, and just so you know, there will be like uh, a an four. extra uh -huh. four yep. damage on... Let's see. Okay, it's only once. Hang on. I got you. Yep. So a total of 24. Yep, 24. Gotcha. All right. And I am pushing it back 20 feet away. <laughs> uh, cardinal direction for me. Uh, that'd be south. Uh, yeah. Yep, straight south. Yep, 24. All right. 24 south. Um, I, I'm going to say Mavet gets moved back with it. Um. Five feet. And uh, how much did you say total? Did you say a uh, 10? A total of 24 damage. No, oh, no, no, no. Distance. distance back. 20 feet. Yeah. 20 feet back. I'm, right. I'm, I'm putting it the full 20. Okay, gotcha. And the just... goal is to put as much distance between that bullet, uh, uh, like belay, and uh, the yep. person in, on the ceiling as possible. Yep. Oh, God, that's such a cool scene, too. It gets launched back. You see, like, uh, the glass casing shatter. And, again, it lands right in front of uh, the uh, ice sculpture. And it just nods in approval. <laughs> I'm picturing it just, like, going back into Mavet, yeah. and Mavet's giving it a bear hug as yep. they're all I... being pushed back. Hell yeah. All right. All uh, right. I believe that's your movement, standard action, bonus action, anything else? Um, uh, wait, hold on. I'm trying to measure this out proper. Five, ten. Okay. Uh, in which case, and then Eddie is going to, uh, oh, right, combat thing. Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, ping location and I'll move it. Uh, yeah, then we're going to, uh, you know what, I guess rather comedically, uh, we're going to have like, uh, like, a Eddie hovering on, in the space on, uh, oh. above this statue. Okay. Uh, how high up? 
That's fucking great. It's like, well, it would have to be like uh, five feet above it. Yeah, just five feet. Gotcha. Uh, Hell yeah. And that'll end Eddie's turn. Okay. Ends uh, Eddie's turn. All right. Uh, the boule is going to begin to burrow, and it's going to proc two tacks of opportunity here. Um, both the boys go right It has ahead. to make a con saving throw. Uh, four. A halo spores. Got you. Yes, sir. Make the constitution saving throw. It's not that good at that. Uh, I would say technically I hmm. Oh, wait, no, I guess I am like uh, hovering in the air, so okay, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's a large creature. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, you're perfectly fine. When I was I was mostly wondering about like the like whether they would have cover or not, but since I'm in the air, I have a better angle than I would have been yeah. on the ground. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, let me see that damage, Muppet. Oh, that totally like it doesn't hurt. Oh. Him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I apologize. I forgot it was save or suck. Um, okay. Uh, two attacks of opportunity from both of you. Uh, I assume both of you are going to take it. I have no reason not to. <laughs> yep. My bad. Do you feel like being nice? Come on, that, brother. That Adam. was my reaction. Okay, that that was your reaction using Halo Sports. Gotcha. All right. Well, I'm, see I'm checking again. their damage resist. Yeah, no problem. Uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, you guys are flopping this fucker around. Oh my god! All three hit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. You know, it's it's better that it, it, it evens out with the previous yeah. <laughs> first three missing all of them. Uh, yep. Let, let's see it, my dude. All three. Uh, All right, are you pushing it back at all? Um, I'll take that 19 damage. That's 1, 2, 4, plus 12. And uh, well, remind me with your uh, your uh, genie, uh, that proficiency damage on your turn? Is on my turn. Uh, during the round? Once, once on okay. my turn. Yeah, once on your turn. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so 19 uh, total. Yeah, not as much damage as before. For, Still, at least for good damage. Next to it, but the... And you know what? Yeah. I will go ahead and push it if for no other reason than to make it have to use more movement to get where it actually wanted to go. Okay. <laughs> so I'll push it just yeah. shy of oh, the yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, what's the direction? Uh, east? Uh, it, it has... To, no, it it, uh, it... it is coming from Eddie. Okay, it's so still coming it from Eddie. It's so south. Yep. There we go. <clears throat> Been a while since I've seen you do pushback. All right. Um, well, it's been a while since it's been relevant. <laughs> yep. There we go. Um, to do it one more, I'll get knocked out the window. Yeah, I'm willing to allow it. Do you want to knock my vet out of the fucking window? <laughs> uh, no, I I want to be, keep the windows intact. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to keep up the resale value. All right. Um, it it burrows. Um, yeah, it, it fucking. <laughs> It burrows. All right. And at that point, um, I think, yeah, yeah, we'll go through one more round of initiative here. Yep. This begins to burrow. My vet, it's your turn. There's no hole left behind. It just burrows into the ground. Oh, and so it's, nice. it's, it, it collapses with uh, uh, ice shaving in chunks. Then I'm going to move. I gotta click the right buttons. Yep. There. Okay. And, um, I will ready an attack 
if it pops up near me. Okay. Aluya, it's your turn. What do you do? Okay. Let me... I'm going to... Take out my trusty little friend as a bonus action and activate him. And as my action... I will... No. Forgot what it's called. It costs six charges. I will use Troll Friends Rally. Okay. Hell yeah. So uh, remind me on, Yeah, I was going to say, remind me on the radius on that. Sure. Uh, it's 30 feet, so as an action, yeah. you can expend six charges to let out a rallying cry, inspiring your allies to fight and inspire their wounds. Each okay. creature of your choice within 30 feet, uh, you gain 66 plus uh, my modifier is three. Yeah. Um, temporary hand points, and we have advantage on attack rolls for one minute, and we yep. also have advantage on strength and dexterity saving throws. Yep. Uh, please uh, jot that down. Roll the uh, 66 plus uh, 3, and we'll see where everyone's temp HP is at. And I believe that uh, still uh, that sustains until the duration ends, or if you lose the hit, uh, temporary HP. All right, that's 12 to everyone. You roll up. Okay. Roll a 3d6 or a 6d6? Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need uh, an additional three, uh, three. Yeah. Oh, three more. Additional three. Yep. All right. That would be uh, 21. Everyone gets 21 uh, temp HP. Love to see it. I was about Please to say, 12 was a bit, would be a very low yeah. roll for 66. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that, Sorry. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Everyone uh, add 21 uh, temp HP. That goes on to uh, the blue number uh, on your uh, uh, token bar if you go into your character sheet. So um, you all have advantage on attacks and you have advantage on dex and strength saving throws. Okay. Anything else on your turn? That's it. All right. Then uh, we move on here to uh, Seer. Seer, what do you do? All right, I'm going to tell you both my turns. Yep, great. So you know later. Turn one, I give Aluia the potion of flight that I have. Mm -hmm. That's my bonus. That's my action because I have to use an item interaction to kind of give that to Aluia. Step two of this plan I cast Sanctuary on myself. Okay, so dual Sanctuary. Step gotcha. Well, in step one, well, and I don't need to, you don't need to concentrate on sanctuary. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep. Step three, I stomp on the floor and make myself bait. Okay. I like that. Okay. And I, I, I'm going to encompass the, the entire turn here. Like, I uh, have it all happen at once and reveal everything that happens once it re reaches your turn. But just to clarify one more time, you hand an elixir to Aluya, you cast sanctuary on yourself, and you stomp on the floor. Am I correct with that? That's for turn one, and that's pretty easy because the idea yep. is like, I'm going to bait this creature because the issue is that even though this creature might be fighting us, the problem is they look for tremors. Yep. I'm going to be the loudest tremor by purposely okay. making as much stomping as possible. Turn two is almost the same, um, except I'm going to drink another elixir. Okay. By the way, um, Aloya, roll 2d6. Mm -hmm. okay. You use the potion. Because if you get that, you get 2d6 plus 6 to temporary hit points. So, uh, well, yeah, keep in mind. It, it. Yeah, I was going to say she she wouldn't use it because uh, temporary uh, hit points don't stack. Oh, no, I'm aware, it, but it allows it, yeah. them to fly. So that that's okay, the key reason gotcha. why I yeah, want right. to Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, um, if you we're going to the temp HP part. The flight is important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so basically, well, and the big thing, too, what I want to mention is I'm drinking my potion no matter what, because yep. I need to get Bless on me for a minute, so that'll be 1d4 on everything, because I can't keep having a minus 3 deterring me. Hmm. And right. that'll cost my bonus action, and then my All final right. action for that one yep. is going to be... I'm just looking at my spell, I just looked at it. 
right away. Yep. Let's see. Um, while you're looking at that, uh, I want to make an announcement to the table. Please, for the love of God, if anyone has active effects, cast any spells, uh, just a lot of note-keeping for their actions, please write it down so uh, I can remember next session. Because surprise, surprise, it, we're not getting through all this today. <laughs> Although, uh, I'm a little confused, uh, Seer. Yeah. So you used your bonus action to cast Sanctuary on yourself, and then you used your action uh, and your item item interaction to give and feed Aluya a potion. I mean, unless... I was thinking of just giving it if Aluya allows me to feed it. Yeah, uh, just a action to force feed. Uh, unless uh, Aluya says otherwise. Because like, it would just be an object interaction to give her the potion. If you wanted to just oh. feed her right now, then that would be an action. No, I won't feed her. So what I'm going to do with my action then, yeah. is if I'm going to do ground. that, is that I'm yeah. stomping on the ground. And then, yeah. like I said, drink my other potion. And then after that spell I'm going to cast, if it rises out of the ground, it is going to be fairy fire. And I I will have that concentration with um, Spank. Okay. Um, and just, yeah. So it... I... Yeah, I, it, I would say. Yeah, go ahead. I uh, I think it's worth noting that since because we currently have those temporary hit points, we already have advantage. It might not be the worst idea to hold off on that. I mean, I can. I don't mind doing that. The only other thing I could think of is I, I cast blur on myself. Not bad. Well, I mean, you could also just cast dot because, like, since it probably has tremor sense, it blur probably wouldn't do anything for you. But I, oh, honestly, if you just right. use dodge. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it simple. I'll do you've, made yourself, so that... you've made yourself a target. You're sanctuaried. That's that's double layering your protection right there without having to use anything that might not work. Okay. That works. I'm going to dodge then. That'll make it easier for Gray to remember too. All right. I got to okay. go. Bye-bye. Gotcha. All right. Let's uh, quickly go through the next turn here. Um, We're going to go uh, with, again, another lair action. All right. Let's uh, see nearby material here. Uh, fortunately, uh, nothing happens. All right. It's just getting thicker and thicker. Eddie, it is your turn. What are you going to do? Uh, well, I'm in an awkward spot because there's not really a whole lot I can do. So... Uh... We're going to have, at the very least, make sure I'm on token and not target. Uh, yeah. I'm going to move Eddie okay. to here. Okay. And... Yeah, I have really nothing else to do with my action right now, so uh, okay. I think I'm just going to take the dodge action, and then I'm going to move Eddie just uh, the tedious bit more southward. Actually... Yep, and I can move it. Yeah, if I, yeah, if I move it a little bit more, like uh, the person will still be in the aura <laughs> yep there you go got it the uh, and yeah that'll be it all I'm right dodging i moved and everyone's repositioning themselves <laughs> okay it is boulet's turn nothing happens i bet it's your turn Lavette is tired of nothing happening. Yep. Can I try to open this door? You would. <laughs> Dexterity saving throw, though. Advantage. Yep. <laughs> Don't give me the roll. 
Yeah. <laughs> My vet, it's finding all the holes. Yeah. Making all the holes. <laughs> and, and I'm just clenching as you guys keep moving. It's just it's good time for me. All right. I'm going to request a roll here. I'm probably one of the best people to find these. Oh, yeah. Well. Well, besides Eddie, yeah. who can fly. It's at advantage, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you succeed. You uh, move out of the way. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me double check the wording on this. Yep. Okay. So fucking got damn unfortunate. All right. Uh, if you have movement, you can uh, jump over this. I assume you open the door. Yes. Okay. Move this out of the way, make it invisible. Please move yourself. Game's paused, it can't. Yep, oh, sorry. Go right ahead. Okay. All right, you uh, enter this room, and uh, let me give you a little bit of... Uh, the preamble here. You see a hallway stretches out before you. It's lined with uh, the same hearth that you see from uh, the lobby. And uh, you see a cabinet and a long table used for uh, both eating and study. The purple haze is thicker here, swirling lazily around the room. There's a long bench that sits against one wall. Um, you notice that every time you look away then look back, the cabinet seems to have shifted slightly. The atmosphere is oppressive and the air feels charged with an unseen energy. The long bench occasionally rattles, and the table seems to vibrate with a faint, unnatural hum. Can I tell where the smoke is thickest? Uh, I need investigation, and you need to spend... I can use an action for it. Yeah, use an action. I'm going to require an action here. And is this also at advantage? Is everything at advantage? Uh, uh remind me. Strengthen, strengthen, uh, strengthen dexterity and attack rolls. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's not with advantage. Uh, this is going to be a uh, investigation check. I'll offer it to you. I mean, any sort of bonus since I'm one with the smoke. Uh, I would actually uh, propose a, a a penalty. Well, mm. I'm down for either. I'll, I'll roll with the well, shot. Well, I'm trying to think because like the the main uh, way I had it is you could see through the smoke, but again, you are one with the smoke. You you feel it as part of you. So yeah, I will let, allow you to roll with advantage here. Would you like to uh, inspiration or anything? Yeah. Okay. Not even that high of a DC. You just rolled really fucking poorly. Oh, no. So, uh, yeah. See it one more time. I'll offer it. And since I used inspiration, it was just being normal rebel then. Um, it remember serves the uh, inspiration allows for a reroll. And if it's with advantage, I believe you reroll with an advantage. It's just another d20. Yeah, okay, so it's just another d20. Thank you. All right. Oh my god, dude. I'm sorry. It's just the smoke's everywhere. Like, perhaps the smoke feels unfamiliar to you. You feel uh, disoriented. Somebody farted and it really smells. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't Marvette still you. has some movement. Yep. Where are you going? North, yeah. west, or south? Okay. South. And I can open this one too. Yep. Open it. As you walk in, let me explain what you see because you got ahead of, uh, ahead of me. I I numbered a lot of this, and I can't explain how. Lucky and unlucky you are. 
So we'll start with the first thing, the pit trap that you walk into. <laughs> Roll me a dexterity. <laughs> it's like first, the pit trap you walk into. <laughs> yeah. But let's 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 deal with that first. At least you that's... have advantage. Yeah. Roll with advantage, buddy. Move to the side. You succeed. All right. Uh, and was that all your movement? My bad. I'm checking because I either have 40 or 45. I think it's just 40. Yeah, that's all my movement. All right. I'll allow you to move in one of the spaces five feet from that position. Do you want to move uh, north, east, or west? I want to get closer. Okay. Yourself? All right. By the way, now let me explain what you see. You see a boule uh, that surfaced from uh, the ground, and you see its mouth digging into the water. And you got ahead of the game here because uh, one person in question was just about to scream. But, again, like uh, as you walk in, is, is someone there? Help! Help! And I believe you already used up your entire action economy. I have a bonus action left. Um, yeah. Well, you can't do an unarmed strike, so what do you do? I, oh, dang it. I don't want to get rid of that many temp HP. Yeah. So. Um, let me give you a little bit of the flavor text as you're uh, uh, considering your options here. As you enter the bathroom, greeted by like a faint sound of dripping water, it's echoing. In the, the chamber pot and the washing tub, the air is thick with the purple haze still. It's beginning to be a little bit harder to see. You see that the tub that the boule has its uh, head in is filled with the same murky purplish water and seems to shimmer with an eerie light. The mirror on the wall reflects a strange dist uh, distorted image of you. Um, but yes, you hear from the ba uh, bathtub, although you don't see anyone, even with your uh, vision, uh, you hear someone yelling from uh, the west inside of the bathtub. Oh, fun. Well, I guess I'll just do nothing. I'll wait till my next turn. All right. I'll yell. Oh, wait, I'll yell out. I found another one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Luya, it's your turn. What do you do? Um, I will try to dispel it again, but at a higher level. Okay. Uh, what level are you going with? I can get to my spells. I'm going to go with um, fourth level. Fourth level, alright. If you do that, and you expend uh, the spell slot? I do. Still have to make a check. And I don't okay. believe it lowers the DC. I was just telling you that. It does not. Yeah, but higher level. All right, and charisma check. Keep in mind, uh, you uh, you do still have uh, sorcery points in case you fail, and it will have a great effect. Would you like to re-roll that eight? Make it out of 13. Why are two being rolled? I'm getting confused. It's the same. Don't don't worry about it. It is the same number. If you notice, it yeah. it's a glitch. Don't worry about it. You are rolling a die. And I, it is only rolling yeah, once. Yeah, I will just use a point. Yep. Offer you another roll. Let me just fix that. There we go. Okay. Roll. The DC was 18. Nice. Good fucking job. Let me tell you what you uh, dispelled. You uh, caused the smoke to uh, thin out, and you disable one of its magical effects, which the next one would have been noxious fumes, which would have caused the incapacitate, uh, incapacitated condition along with the poison condition. It was a nasty fucking one. I'm going to delete that off my lair actions. All right. 
got an immense effect. Uh, please flavor how the spell looks. So um, I try again, but I concentrate deeply and I bring my arms out in front of me in like a fist. Like they're both fisted. I mean, that sounds weird. You know what I mean? And yeah, you're fisting the smoke. I follow. <laughs> We've seen weird shit with trees. It. Yeah. And then um, you see the static uh, build up in my fists and they kind of uh, shoot up my arms, but they kind of fizzle out. And as they're fizzling out, I'm going to just bring my arms out and my hands to just spell it. Oh, yeah. And we just uh, see like the smoke begin to thin out and die. It's a lot less purple. Um, I'm I'm going to say um, I'm going to land it on this here because a lot of information just went by, and it more than likely would have changed uh, what she would have done. But I will at least say, uh, on the following round, uh, the room that Mavet was in, you guys would have heard a cry, and I'm going to tell you the players again. There were six subjects. And this is uh, simultaneous. There are multiple encounters happening. And uh, the longer you linger on each battle, the more likely some of these subjects will die. This is going to be essentially a competitive game of hide and seek. And so far, you guys are doing really fucking good. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's do a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, please, I want everyone to write down any of the effects that they've done or anything that would be relevant for the next combat. And we'll go over it before we start uh, the, the next session, next time we meet up here. But uh, at this moment, I'm pretty sure I want to end the session here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you, Gray. This has been House Common Blood. The intro and outro music is Oh My Dog by Savik, and any other music and sound effects used in the episode are royalty free. Credits can be found in the episode description. Please review us on whatever podcast listening app you happen to be using. And if you like us, tell other people. Word of mouth is the best way for us to grow. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you soon.